This movie is an excerpt from a longer lesson and you can find out more evidence-based information about childbirth physiology and practice in my blog, podcast, books, courses, mailing list and membership. Please see the links in the description and subscribe to this channel to be notified of new content. So starting with pregnancy, this bit is a bit of revision from the placenta lesson. We're going to work our way outwards from the baby when looking at the anatomy. And the amniotic sac is made up of two layers. So the amnion is the layer of the sac that's closest to the baby. And the chorion is the outside layer, which gets its name because it looks like a corona, a crown. And those little chorionic villi, like the little forest looking bits that stick out, grow into the uterine lining and become the placenta. So early in pregnancy, as you can see, there's a space between these layers. And as the pregnancy progresses and the baby gets bigger, the amnion gets pushed further and further outwards. And eventually the two layers, the amnion and the chorion, are very close to each other. But they always have around 200 mils of fluid and mucus between them. So they're separate membranes, but kind of pushed up next to each other. But they're not fused. And you can see in this photograph, the chorion is peeling away from the amnion after birth. And it looks like they have filled the amniotic sac with water to show how it would have looked before birth. And the baby would have been in that bag. Okay, so that is the anatomy of the amniotic sac. And the fluid is held within that. And it's often referred to as the amniotic cavity, which just describes the kind of inside of that balloon, if you like. Let's have a look at the fluid itself. And amniotic fluid has an important function in pregnancy. It helps the baby to grow and develop. In early pregnancy, it provides the space for growing by holding back the uterine muscle from creating pressure over the baby's growing body. And the baby is floating rather than having to push against the uterine walls to grow. The fluid allows the baby to move, kick and develop their muscles and it prevents the amniotic membrane from sticking to the baby because it's held off the baby by the fluid. Amniotic fluid protects the baby from infection by creating an actual physical barrier and preventing bacteria from tracking up the vagina and getting to the baby, but it also contains antibacterial factors, so transferrin, fatty acids, immunoglobulins and lysozymes. The fluid also supports the baby to develop their lungs and their ability to breathe because they breathe the fluid in and out, kind of practicing breathing. And you can see them doing that on ultrasound. And the fluid provides a buffer against any impact to the mother's abdomen. It also helps to regulate the baby's temperature by maintaining a constant temperature, like a warm bath, which is usually higher than the mother's temperature. We're talking about 0.5 of a degree Celsius. The fluid also contains trace chemicals from the food the mother eats. So this helps to develop the baby's smell and taste. And the fluid smells and tastes very like the mother's colostrum, preparing the baby for recognizing their food source post-birth. So while amniotic fluid is often overlooked in pregnancy, it plays a really important part in the health and the development of the baby. We're going to look at the volume of amniotic fluid and what it's made up of. But remember that volume measurements are general. And for some babies, their range of normal may be very different to other babies. And that's a variation rather than a problem. So before keratinization of the baby's skin begins, there is a free exchange of fluid between the baby and the amniotic sac. Keratinization is the development of the layers of the skin, which forms a barrier. And this process begins for the baby at around nine weeks. We're looking at before that. So between four and eight weeks, there's this fluid exchange between the baby and the amniotic sac. And the amniotic fluid is secreted by the amniotic membrane cells. And by around eight weeks, it increases to about 20 mils. So we're talking about small volumes, but we also are talking about a very small fetus. From 11 weeks gestation, the baby secretes urine into the amniotic fluid. And there's around 350 mils by 20 weeks. So about the same volume as a standard can of soft drink. 
And then by 37 weeks, there's around 700 to 1,000 mils of fluid. And most of that is from the baby's urine, with around 300 mils of fluid secreted by the baby's respiratory and gastrointestinal tract, mostly from their lungs. Fluid may also diffuse across the placental membranes from the mother to the baby. Now, notice I'm using the word may here. There's not actually a lot known about amniotic fluid and diffusion across the placenta. From 37 weeks onwards, the amniotic fluid declines. And this is primarily because the baby's kidneys get better at concentrating urine. So there's less volume of urine coming from the baby. Therefore, it's a normal physiological process for there to be less fluid by 40 weeks than there was at 37 weeks. Now, if you look at the literature, it often states that by 42 weeks, there is inadequate, in quotes, fluid. And that's because of the parameters they're using to define normal ranges. So looking at the circulation and the regulation of fluid, amniotic fluid is in constant circulation. So it's being produced and cleared and changes every 43 hours. This process may be regulated by prolactin and prostaglandins, but again, the word may is used here. And until around 24 weeks, the baby's skin continues to be a major pathway for the exchange of fluid because the keratinization isn't at a level to prevent that exchange. Now we are gonna focus on a term baby in terms of fluid. So this is a diagram of a term baby. And if we look at what is creating the amniotic fluid, so that's the in, into the amniotic cavity, we have fluid being mostly produced by the baby's kidneys. So coming out into the cavity as urine and from the lungs, but at a much smaller proportion. And then if we look at how the fluid moves out of the amniotic cavity, it's primarily excreted by the baby swallowing the fluid and then absorbing it into their bloodstream and sending it back to their mother through the placenta. So basically, amniotic fluid is produced by the baby and cleared by the mother. And again, it's thought that some fluid will be diffusing across the amniochorionic membranes, again, into the mother's system. So what's it made up of? Here's a list of the ingredients of amniotic fluid, but 98 to 99% of it is water. 